Okay, so Stephanie and I yesterday were bouncing things back and forth uh, on each other. And when it comes to specific details about uh, ourselves, there's pretty good blocks uh, on both of us because uh, we know that we leave. <laughs> uh, we both know that. But we got to bouncing things back and forth because I've been seeing, I've been actually visually seeing forms. And then once I see them visually, I can read aspects of them vibrationally. So I was talking to her because I know she's way more, uh, I think I've told you guys that on when I'm not here, I don't do physical very often. I'm more of a an energy being and I like big pictures. I like to collect big data on different creations and different aspects and kind of look at them from a different standpoint. and kind of show that standpoint to the creator of that uh, creation so that they can get ideas uh, on how to tweak it or do something else and we share that amongst ourselves and that's part of the creation process and that's kind of my favorite thing to do and Stephanie's favorite thing to do we really kind of honed in on it yesterday which is good news because that means some of our amnesia about ourselves is um, going away which means we're even closer to 5D or we wouldn't do that. Uh, we've got to be really close so that whenever we do remember, we'll go, oh, well, we're almost there. Might as well stay here. And we were able to get hers a lot clearer in a year. Right after I died, I was talking to her because she's an artist. And I said, I'm seeing that she does art, but it's art that is attached to the page, but it's alive. And it's like three-dimensional moving uh, art, but it's not the live thing it is art somehow used with energy beautiful oh my gosh it was the prettiest thing and i couldn't figure out what it was i thought well maybe since she's a techie too maybe she starts doing some kind of art with holographics and cgi and stuff i didn't really understand it but yesterday we kind of homed in on it and what she does is she kind of catalogs life forms everywhere yeah, physical life forms and so she's really got all of this knowledge about all these different beings on all these different planets and all these different creations so the reason why we found that out is I was talking and I said well I saw this and it was this color and I get the feeling the vibration vibrationally I can read that it looks like this acts like this and she would go oh well that's a this or oh that's a that and I we kept going back and forth and whenever she'd remember that the thing I was describing then that would trigger her to remember some other being that kind of hangs out with that being and she would describe it to me and then I would look out on the planet or around us in nature and I'd go oh my gosh yeah there it is and then th then I would see something else that I had seen describe it we went back and forth like that for an hour two hours it was so much fun so I think I've talked her into because she is an artist of uh, starting a book with illustrations uh, describing these these um, beings and their personalities and what they like to do and what they look like and um, hopefully she'll have uh, her ver her first because this could go on for like thousands of books uh, you know it'd be like cataloging insects on this planet there's a lot of beings but I think it might be good for you guys to kind of have a picture and an idea so you will recognize them and not think that you're you know really focus on them and and recognize them especially start with the ones that there are a lot of them like fairies everybody has fairies all around them I don't care where you live uh, fairies are in my opinion the the they have the most population on this planet and they vibrate about as low as any of the, the uh, magical creatures do and they'll be one of the first things that you see but there were a couple other ones that were very 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 close vibrationally that I think you might see too so anyway I wrote down some of these and I want to read them to you because uh, before she gets this book out I want you to start looking for these guys and uh, one of them was I was uh, watching I was sitting here and my computer's like a foot away and I was looking at the computer and I saw underneath me run across really fast like a like a fast um, squirrel like and it had like gray fur 
white stuff and it was about two feet tall real fluffy around and it had claws on the end of its fingers and uh, some of them had pointy noses and some of them had square noses Stephanie says those are different ones but these are the original gremlins now all of the magical creatures that humans remember they all added really horrible things about them that aren't true all these creatures are in 5d there's nothing to fear about them they're wonderful so any of the beings that you've seen humans took them and made them monsters and that's true with the gremlins so she said these are gremlins and uh, yeah they're, they're just what I described and very cool I mean just kind of, she said similar to some of them have bobtails some of them have big bushy tails and she said that they're kind of a cross between kind of a oh I also said that they could walk like on all fours and then go back and walk on two feet and then go down and she said that it's um, kind of a cross ish between a squirrel and a raccoon because they do this with their hands with their little claws like a raccoon does and a squirrel will hold things so that's a gremlin so keep your eyes open for that um, fairies most of the time will run around little tiny but they can go any way they want now all of the magical creatures can shape shift as you will be able to but like you they will like they will have their preferent preferential um, way that they like to be on 5d earth that they like to play and uh, fairies although they can zoom up and be your size and talk to you a lot of times they run around in little tiny like you like fireflies you know they'll zoom 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 and fairies are probably what 5d would call the worst even though there's no such thing because and it's not because they're bad it's just that fairies are very fun loving and they love practical jokes now everything in 5d knows better than to fear death so I mean it's not above a fairy to convince somebody to walk off of a you know, this is just an example but uh, walk off the edge of a cliff and fall to their death and just laugh uproariously because they know that person will die and come back and they can go right back to being right on the top of the cliff and go <sighs> and that's fairies fairies are just very they like practical jokes that's why they like humans so much <laughs> probably because humans were really easy to, to do practical jokes with <laughs> but anyway uh, they're they're all over the place and uh, the fairies are not evil there are no evil fairies although they can look kind of twisted and like roots if they want to uh, especially to be right in front of your face and be a twisted kind of converted to scare you because it's hilarious to them so jump and go oh, and they go oh, really don't let it take you to fear I mean it's fun if you do it the right way and uh, let's see then there are these little I don't know how to explain these and Stephanie called them porcupine people and there are ones that have like porky like spiky things that come off their back that are like porcupines except they're really soft and then the ones that I saw had kind of this anime looking pokey out hair feathery stuff and it moved all the time it was moving it was also very soft and they had round faces big eyes little noses little mouths and very expressive like ears and they would be everything from natural colors to bright bright rainbow colors and she said because I was trying to describe the the pokey things or fur or the feathery things and she said that they can control all of their fur so that it makes it move and wave in any way they want to so it looks really really cool so keep your eye out for the porcupine people and then there's the tree people and I have seen the tree people before and they are very loungy and they lounge along the branches and they'll kind of camouflage into a tree and uh, if you watch real closely you have to be they move very slow and you can see them and they just kind of are very loungy and very uh, match the trees that they're in and very calm they don't interact much very similar to trees kind of personality wise except they're a se separate entity a, a, a separate being um, that moves around 
So watch for the tree people. And then there is a whole mess. I mean, oh, so many. Because I just kind of panned out when she brought them up. I just kind of panned out and saw so many of what she calls the horn people. And these are people that really take horns to be like an art form. And they'll create all different kinds of swirls and textures and magnificent antlers and different colors and changing colors and sparkles and some of them are humanoid uh, some of them are like half human half goat half human half horse and that's where those stories come from but they're not bad like they tell in the stories of course and there are all kinds of these guys and they are just really nice I mean I would put them just nice they're not all their vibration is just so nice you just want to go hang with them and there's all of those keep your eyes out for those and uh, then there's the insectoid people and there's all kinds of those and just kind of any kind of insect you can think of praying mantis walking stick um, cockroaches um, all kinds that are hu you know human size and oh they're they are I would say the insectoid people are probably the most gentle that I can feel vibration if I have to translate it for you guys I would say gentle is their strongest vibration just very gentle um, phenomenally so just yeah so there's a bunch of those out there and um, you look through this list and see who I haven't talked about yet oh water bugs slash cockroaches they can be any color and uh, they like uh, fire and rainbow colors is what they prefer and uh, some of them are just yellow or blue or green or purple and Stephanie was talking about the water people and they can be clear to prism colored very flowy very they move all the time move all the time uh, and in 5D, like, there can be a fire being that's all made of fire that swims in the water. So the elements don't fight like they do here. Um, and then water people can, you know, get in the middle of a big fire, call them a fire. And uh, uh, waterfall, rivers, ocean, and creeks, they all have individual kind of beings that are that hang out in those areas that are very similar to those bodies of water. She really likes the water people. I obviously do too. Otherwise, that's probably what I'm drawn to by the water, which I really love. Um, she just smiled and gave this knowing wink, and she brought up volcano people. I could not find them whenever I was uh, scanning, but I've never been around a volcano, so I think vibrationally I was not able to home in on it. But she came kind of this knowing link so uh, I would keep my eye if you're around a volcano I would keep my eye out for those people and then there's hot springs and mud pot people that are very unique and uh, the hot springs and mud people are kind of like uh, twins that aren't that aren't um, identical twins Stephanie said so they don't communicate like identical twins do but they're very very similar in a lot of ways um, clear quartz people uh, they move like liquid and uh, they don't change they oh, oh yeah there's ones that move like liquid and then there are ones that move like you know that are hard quartz that move very like this she said and then all the different colors amethyst and all the different they have different um, um, people uh, entities that lean towards those different things uh, then she brought up the harpies and the harpies are uh, and harpies and mermaids and the harpies are really really cool there are the harpies and the mermaids have male and females but they're very feminine looking on um, both of them and um, the mermaids do not go on land and sprout legs. They don't do that. That's humans thinking that their legs are all that. And that's where those stories came from. 
and harpies are um, the lower half are birds and she said that they're really big on their tails they like to change their tails or like change colors or put like like twirly um, things in them like they'll change the tail feathers and make very unique designs and and um, that aren't feathery in them like a woman would change her stuff in her hair and the mermaids are like that with their scales and their feet they'll change them and change the colors and uh, kind of like changing clothes and mermaids mermaids are okay these two are both both the mermaids and the harpies are extremely graceful and flowy and they all love to sing and they can Stephanie said that they can when they sing they can make you see the song like I think there's a Disney movie like that where somebody was singing and you could see the song well when a harpy and a mermaid sing you can see the song visually with your eyes a human can see the song with their eyes um, both of them uh, the mermaids and the harpies have long hair and they love to put decorations in them then there's the butterfly moth people and wasp people and bee people and the insectoid people are the most intelligent if you think intelligence that's their big thing they're really very 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 intelligent uh, very good teachers because they're so gentle and extremely intelligent that they're they're very good teachers and then she started then she started laughing and started talking about worms and caterpillars and I said stop uh, because I was in overload so um, I'll just let her um, I just wanted to give you guys some ideas about what she had told me and what I saw whenever I scanned so that you guys have some kind of an idea of what you're looking for as you transition into 5D and why uh, cities and jobs and money are so not important that the interaction with all of these beings are going to be they're going to keep you way busy uh, because they're gonna be very curious about you and your life in 3D okay they're gonna really want to talk to you about your experience so yeah there's it's gonna be very fun but it's not going to be fun like here. You're not going to get on a, in a race car and drive around in circles. It's going to be a different kind of fun. Okay? So there you go. thought you guys would enjoy that. And uh, let me get these uploaded. They're going slow today. All right? Big hugs to everybody. I love you so much. Bye now.